How Seoul Transformed a Freeway into a River and Public Park The downtown green space in Seoul was once a looming, congested, elevated freeway. We were excited to learn about this project that has made Seoul, Korea a legend in urban planning circles, the Cheonggi Cheon Restoration Project. What Dr. Ki Yeon Hwang and his colleagues did was nothing short of amazing, not because it actually worked, but because they were able to attain public support for it. They demolished a busy elevated freeway, re-daylighted the river that had been buried beneath it, and created a spectacular downtown green space, all in under two and a half years. In this video, we'll show you how Seoul City transformed a crowded multi-lane freeway into a river and walking urban green space. And we will show you how the Chung Yi Chung Restoration Project became one of the most successful urban green mega projects in the world by increasing the biodiversity by more than 600%. Welcome back to Circle of the Earth, where we explore everything about reforestation, decertification, and greening projects. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. The Chung Yi Chung story began hundreds of years ago during the empire of the Joseon dynasty, where the kingdom's castle was regarded as the head of Seoul and the river as the body. That was its illustrious history. By the early 1920s, as Seoul grew into the 10 million person metropolis that it is today, the river was boarded by a slum and used as a dumping ground, resulting in an ugly mess of polluted water. Dr. Wang, the president of the Korea Transport Institute, explained, Sometimes it was blue, sometimes it was black, sometimes it was red. In the 1950s, it seemed logical to cover it up and build a freeway over it. By 1976, the four-lane elevated Chung Yi Chung Freeway, which resembled Seattle's Alaskan Way Viaduct, stood as a symbol of Korea's successful industrialization and modernization. However, what followed was not only traffic, smog, and the decline of downtown Seoul, which the river and then the freeway ran through, but also decades of bad luck for a succession of Korean leaders. Some were executed by shooting while others were imprisoned for bribery. This was nicknamed the Chung Yi Chung Curse. In the meantime, from 1976 to 1995, Seoul's population increased by 44%, from 6.8 million to 9.8 million residents. And the Chung Yi Chung Elevated Freeway, which ran through the heart of Seoul's old town, became one of the busiest locations in Seoul City. It was the heart of 60,000 businesses and 200,000 shopkeepers, with a population of 1 million people visiting every day. By the early 2000s, a daily average of 168,000 cars passed along the freeway. The Chung Yi Chung area had the highest levels of noise and traffic jams in the city, and the immense volume of traffic on the expressway meant that by the 1990s, the entire system of concrete tunnels and roads was deteriorating. An engineering survey revealed structural flaws, indicating the need for an expensive renovation project. The roads of the Chung Yi Chung Highway could no longer withstand the strain of the megacity Seoul had become after 40 years. Dr. Huang said, some crazy people got together and fantasized about the project of removing the elevation highway and restoring the ancient river of Chung Yi Chung. Dr. Huang created a traffic model to see what would happen if a vital traffic artery carrying 168,000 cars per day was removed. He included adjustments to the other streets and increased transit in the model to see if Seoul could survive without the freeway. The model's results surprised him. It could not only work, but would actually improve travel times in downtown Seoul. With the mayoral election in Seoul getting closer, Dr. Huang and his colleagues decided to pitch the idea to the candidates and found one willing to make it a central campaign platform, Lee Myung Bak. He campaigned on demolishing the elevated freeway and restoring the river, and he won the elections. At this point, the story takes an ironic turn. The president of the construction company that built the freeway is Lee Mung Bak, who better than he to admit the mistake was made in the first place. After the elections, Dr. Huang was quickly appointed as the director of the Seoul Development Institute's research center for the Chung Yi Chung Restoration Project, with the task of completing what should have been a two-year design process in six months. That's not to say the project went easy through the public process. Not at all. There were 3,000 street vendors who made money from selling their goods to people stuck in traffic. Some even threatened to commit suicide if the project went ahead. 
Fortunately, the mayor anticipated the backlash and established a public engagement team as large as the design team. Finally, in 2003, they were able to secure sufficient funding to begin, and the restoration of the Chung Chung began. It required 700,000 skilled workers and cost nearly a billion dollars. The river was re-exposed as the focal point of a larger urban renewal effort to revitalize Seoul's ecology, culture, and history. Several projects involving local communities were undertaken during construction, including the creation of tiles by local schoolchildren. Traffic was rerouted and bridges were built across the river, as well as public parks and recreational spaces. Sites of historical and cultural significance in the surrounding area were also renovated. The project was finished two years later and opened to the public in 2005. The outcome was nothing short of spectacular. The pictures tell the story better than words ever could. Instead of a blight-causing freeway, the mayor created an incredible public amenity, a 3.6-mile linear Green River Park that beautified downtown Seoul and provided residents with a spectacular setting to walk, splash, linger, and truly enjoy the city. But the success story doesn't end there. According to Dr. Huang, there are several other positive externalities that resulted from the Chung Yi Chung restoration project. The most significant accomplishment of the project was the creation of an environment with clean water and natural habitats. The stream excavation has resulted in an increase in the number of fish, birds, and insects. The stream also helps to diminish the urban heat island effect, with temperatures in the vicinity of the river on average 38 degrees Fahrenheit or 3.6 degrees Celsius lower than surrounding areas in Seoul. As a result of the demolition of the two heavily used roads, the number of vehicles entering downtown Seoul has decreased by 2.3%, while the number of users of buses and subways has increased. This has resulted in a significant improvement in air quality, with small particle air pollution dropping by 35%. The increased overall biodiversity is said to be 639%, and these results have proven that increasing urban green spaces in cities and removing toxic highways benefits not only the economy, but also greatly improves the health and well-being of those who visit and live in the area. The success of this project has caught the interest of other cities, making it an inspiring model for other urban renewal efforts, particularly expressway demolition projects and river restoration. Don't you also think this project is such an inspiration? Let us know in the comments what you think about the amazing Chung Yi Chung restoration project. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified on every new video from our channel. Thanks for watching.